everybody and welcome back. So this video is what I'm calling Terminal Resistance 2.0. And the reason I'm doing this is one of my followers or fans, um, as he called it, um, has a, had a problem. Um, basically ran into somebody that was getting out of the hobby and sold them a whole bunch of lipos and told them that they're all in great shape and they all had low flights on them, like less than 25 flights. And the guy went to fly the batteries and they flew like garbage. And he reached out to me and said, look, my voltage is good, but these batteries are garbage. And I said, well, have you watched my one video about lipos and charging and internal resistance? He goes, no, I didn't. And I said, well, I think your internal resistance might be bad on your battery. So let's get off the launch pad and into orbit with this one. So what I'm gonna do is call this LiPo Internal Resistance 2.0. And I'm gonna to describe to him what happened to me where I learned about internal resistance, but also what's happening to him. And it, it could be good or bad, but I want people to understand that we fly all kinds of different regiments. I mean, well, how do I say this? All, all the different uh, ways we fly our airplanes. Some of them have high performance systems, which are EDFs and my big giant scale planes. Some of them are park flyers, which do not tax the system at all. Okay. So if you're a new follower of mine, you know, I'm into giant scale airplanes. I love to build them. I do have some small stuff. I got a flex Cessna 170, which was my favorite go-to plane. I've got an Avanti EDF, Avanti EDF, but I love to design and build and test fly and fly giant scale electric airplanes. It's my passion. Before we get too far into this, I do want to give a shout out to RTL Fasteners. They're a great supporter of mine. Go to their website. They got bolts, nuts, blind nuts, metric standard. They got everything you could possibly want. Servo screws. Um, go to their website. If you buy more than $50, you'll get 30% off if you use code DA30. Okay. So this is my MSL-1, and now I'm going to kind of tell you the parallel between, um, how do I say this? The, the parallel between what, I, what happened to this, this young man and how I learned about internal resistance, okay? So this airplane weighed 71 pounds, had a 197-inch wingspan. There's a rumor it crashed. It's not. It's in my attic. I'm going to put it on floats one day. I just didn't have two power plants at the time. So this is my MSL-1, but it pulled 160 amps on takeoff, which means the batteries needed to really let the power out so I could get maximum amps to fly this airplane. Um, it had about a 64 watts per pound, which is minimal, but it flew it fine. But this thing's a behemoth weight-wise and drag-wise. And I ended up with over 1,350 flights on it, but it was around flight 240. Um, or 280 uh, that I almost crashed it okay so I want to talk basics of battery real quick series circuit looks like this your voltage increases as you add the cells in parallel the capacity increases but not the voltage but I want to plant a seed what if one of these cells are bad what happens to the battery pack so if you fly a 12s system you're gonna have a six cell and a six cell normally in series if you're going to fly a 6S2P, it's going to be a 6S and a 6S in parallel. If you're going to fly 12S2P, it's going to be a 6S and 6S making a series. Another 6S and 6S making a series. And then those are in parallel. The reason I love this on my big airplanes is on 160 amp um, load on takeoff, each of those battery uh, series are only seeing uh, 80 amps each, not a full 160 amps in one battery. Okay. If you look at the top of a lithium polymer lipo when you open it up, you'll see these tabs welded together. But for sake of illustration, I want you to imagine that the cells are liquid vessels that you can fill full of water. So each of these four cells have water, and that big old green honking tube is your internal resistance. So the bigger the tube, the less the internal resistance, and the more it will pull liquid out of those batteries faster or easier, less friction. If you got high internal resistance, you got this little bitty tube that you can't get anything out of. But what happens when you've got a cell or two that's bad in the battery? Okay, you'll check it, your voltage is good, but if you check your internal resistance, you might see you got one cell that's really bad. So if you're ever charging your batteries and you feel a little hot stripe in it, that's a bad cell. That's the reason you should always be with your chargers when you're charging them. 
if you fly and you land, your battery's warm, but you feel one cell really super hot, chances are you got a bad cell. So now I want to tell you the parallel between what happened to this fella and happened to me. So I had been flying the MSO on two and a half years. I show up to a fly-in and check my voltages. Everything were good. Put all the packs in the plane, went down the runway, lifted off, and the plane felt like it was under power. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? And right as I start to turn left, the motor shuts off. And it was my low voltage cutoff. So I cycled the throttle real quick, got it back, and I burped that. I call it burp and burped that throttle four or five times. And I knew I was going to crash because there's a whole bunch of farm equipment out there. But I didn't want to get near people. So basically, I went in between all the farm equipment and didn't hurt the airplane. It was the luckiest day of my life. I thought for sure the plane was goners. But my, Bur my, my friend Berger, who knows everything about electronics, says to me, he goes, was that your low voltage cutoff? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'd turn that off. And I'm not going to, for me, everybody, I set my low voltage cutoff as low as I can now. Because if you're going to crash a plane, you might as well burn up your batteries trying to save it. But I digress. He says, we got to put a meter on your batteries and run it full throttle and see how much the voltage drop. And I think your internal resistance is bad. And I'm like, what's internal resistance? <laughs> so look, everybody, I learned the hard way. I, I didn't know what internal resistance in a battery was. I'd never heard about it. So um, we bring the airplane back to the pits and we took a, put a meter on it, a voltmeter. And as I ran, all my batteries were still about four volts, the cells. We run the throttle up and they all dropped like 2.6 volts. And I'm like, oh my God. And he goes, these batteries are fried, dad. I'm like, whoa, okay. So um, make a long story short, all my friends, Berger, Eamon and Dean got together and we got a bunch of battery packs together and I made some adapters and I still flew for the festival that week. But my batteries were garbage. I did put them on my meter and I checked them. My internal resistance was in the 40s and 50s. And I'll talk in a minute about what's good numbers and bad numbers. But what happens when you got one bad cell in a pack? About six months later, I was flying a pack. And it swelled up really big in the middle like a Big Mac. And when I took it apart, this was a bad cell. So basically, I want you to look at this. So basically, when you look at this four, that cell one had a four. When I'm checking internal resistance, cell two had a four. And this cell three had a 45. And the next one was like a three. So basically, what happens is you can have one bad cell in a battery and it will affect the whole way the battery performs. It will make the battery just suck the life right out of it. So it's really important you always stay with your batteries when you're charging them. It's always really important that you do maintenance on your battery. Most chargers will have a way to check your internal resistance. Even some of these voltmeters, you can press the buttons in the right sequence and check your internal resistance. So the thing is, is the parallel between me and this guy is he bought a bunch of batteries, was flying his 3D plane, was hovering it, and it wouldn't stay in a hover, and he finally landed it, and he checked the voltage, and the voltage was back into like the 3.8s, 3.9s. And I said, do you know how to check internal resistance? And he ended up checking it. And believe it or not, internal resistance on those batteries are all in the high 30s. And I said, buddy, I hate to tell you this. Either this battery is left fully charged for a long time, or this guy lied to you about how many flights there were on these batteries. That's the reason I don't buy used LiPos. Now, I'm going to back up. I'm, how do I say this? I'm going to basically contradict what I just said. I don't buy used LiPos for my high-performance planes. You may have a park flyer, you might have a cub, and you could have the internal resistance in the 30s and it would fly it fine because you're just going to put putt around. But if you're flying an EDF or 3D or a heli or something where you need a lot of amps, you want that internal resistance. Now, in my other video, I gave you a scale range of what the numbers of a good or a bad battery is. And I'm going to modify that in this video because I've learned a lot about internal resistance between the time I make some of my videos. So if you're high performance, you want less than eight, okay? From what I've been doing in my testing, if I am an eight or less, that battery is still giving you just about all the amps it's designed or advertised to do. 
if you're just going to fly like a park, no, I don't want to say a park flyer. If you're going to fly like an ARF P40 or a 60 size P40 or all that, you could probably be as high as a 20 internal resistance and that plane won't care. But if you're getting into 3D or a heli or high performance, like I said, you want to be below an eight. Now, let's say you got a park flyer with a little three cell in it. I've got one that I still fly and my internal resistance was in the 40s on it. But, you know, I did a scale takeoff. But make sure you on your ESC, you set your low voltage cutoff really low. Because if that battery decides to take a dump on you, it's better to puff up the battery than to crash your airplane when the motor shuts off. Okay. And lastly, what's really important about knowing your internal resistance is if you parallel charge. There are actually a couple of videos out there on the internet that says parallel charging doesn't work and it's really dangerous and you're an idiot to do it. And I've done it 12 years and never had a problem. Now, probably the reason I don't have a problem is I know what my internal resistance is, I know how to keep my cells balanced, and I know how to take care of my batteries. If I'm going to be some doofus and just plug in all my different batteries and try to parallel charge them, yeah, I might get a fire. But... The most important thing about flying electrics is knowing your hardware, knowing your ESC, your motor, the prop you've got, knowing your batteries. Make sure you know what your internal resistance is. <clears throat> One of the things, if you don't have a way to check internal resistance, is you can put the little, and two people need to help you do this, you can put your meter on your, um, hang on a minute, let me go back and make sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you can put this meter on your battery and if you're at 4.2 volts fully charging, go to full throttle and it drops to like 4, 3.95, chances are your battery's pretty good. If it drops to 2.8, your battery's garbage. So depending on how much load you're putting on it, now if you don't have a big load on the battery at all, you might not see the voltage come down hardly at all. But the lower your internal resistance, the better it holds the voltage. Okay, as the current is drawing. So let's say your current goes up to like 160 amps and that voltage goes from 4.2 to 4. Chances are that's a pretty dang good battery. But if it goes to 3.7, you might <clears throat> find somebody that owns a way to check your internal resistance and see what it is. Okay? So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I'm just trying to help out. Uh, now, these are only my experiences. Keep in mind, on my YouTube channel, I don't go to Google to find answers. I don't tell you what other people have done. I don't think I do. <clears throat> I only tell you my experiences and my successes. And one reason I have such great success in this hobby is I'm a nerd. I'm a big old fat certified nerd. I love to know what the internal is. I have log books on some batteries. Well, not a book. It's more of a, uh, it's, it's one of these things. Um, on all my batteries. And I check internal resistance about once a month. If I'm going to fly a lot, I might do it once a week, but I check internal resistance once a month. But you can tell sometimes when you're charging, if you feel a hot spot, you know you got a bad cell. Okay? So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I'm just trying to help you all understand that internal resistance is really, really important on a high-performance plane or a chopper or an EDF. But if it's a park flyer, it might not matter that much. If it's a cub, it might not matter that much. I mean, to a point, if, you have, if, if your internal resistance in the 60s, yeah, that battery might even get a cub off the ground. So I hope this helps everybody. Have an awesome day. And you know I always in these videos talking about getting youth or younger people involved in the hobby. Quads are here to stay. FPV is here to stay. Um, slope so soaring is here to stay. I heard somebody throw in a tantrum about slope soaring, which, hey, you probably would, would think that a really hot model is just a train wreck. I don't know. But here's the thing. Keep the youth in it. If you're one of these old farts that sit in your lawn chair with your 400-pound P40, and you never fly it, and you want to tell everybody how to run the field, you need to just go ruin somebody's golf game and, and get away from the youth. We need the youth to make sure a lot of aviation survives. Okay? So rock on, everybody. I'll see you next time. I got a whole bunch of videos coming up. I've been too busy with work lately to do these. And... Um, and the Fra Emma Stein, if you don't know what that is, is back in my shop. I didn't lie to you all when I did the one video. It is back in my shop, and it's going to be completed in February of 2023. Rock on, everybody. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.